one thing you should have seen in the previous section was the use of an assembly instruction called swapgs at the entry point of the system call target. So what was the reason for that? Well, if we look at the man manual page for the swapgs assembly command, you can see this line. When using syscall to implement system calls, there is no kernel stack at the OS entry point. Neither is there a straightforward method to obtain a pointer to the kernel structures from which the kernel stack pointer could be read. Thus, the kernel cannot save general purpose registers or reference memory. So the swap GS is designed to help deal with this problem of there being no you know, designed way for the stack to be changed for the syscall assembly instruction. So swap GS swaps the GS base register. And what does it swap it between? It swaps it between the IA32 GS base, which is the portion of the hidden hidden portion of the segment register for GS that is mapped to this MSR, and a new MSR, IA32 kernel GS base, which is used to store the base address for when you're in kernel space. So basically when you're in a system call or possibly for things like interrupt handlers, it's desirable to just swap back and forth, you know, flip these two values of what is effectively your user space base address pointing at some user space data structure and your kernel base address. So swap GS flips and flops between these two things. So back to this picture from before, we saw that you know the normal segment register is pointed at a giant space, but we saw that FS and GS are still treated like the original way segmentation worked and can point at some arbitrary starting linear address. We saw that the hidden portion was mapped to the MSRs, FS base and GS base. And now we're introducing this MSR kernel GS base. So when the system is running along in user space, the OS may or may not choose to put some data structure referenced from GS base. And we'll see that Windows does actually decide to put some data structure there. Then a system call occurs and it says change places and CS, sorry, and the GS from the kernel and user space is swapped. And that means that this user space data structure all of a sudden now starts pointing at some kernel data structure inside the kernel. Likewise, when you're exiting out of kernel space, the kernel is going to again tell you to change places and the swap GS will flip back around to a user space data structure. So swap GS is one of these assembly instructions which happens to be balanced in and of itself. The expectation is that the kernel calls swap GS on the way in and calls swap GS on the way out in order to flip flop data structures. So what data structures in particular? Well, on Windows for a long time, the 32-bit systems had this data structure called the thread environment block, but you'll also see it referred to as the thread information block. In reality, the thread information block is just the first element of the thread environment block, but thread information block was the only thing that Microsoft had officially uh, documented, so whatever. But this uh, thread environment block was used in user space. So if you saw references to FS, frequently you would see that in like malware analysis because malware would go know that this data structure is there and would go look up information from there. And then in kernel space, there was a kernel processor control region, which would be used to uh, hold a bunch of data structure information that the kernel wanted access to. Now on 64-bit, uh, Windows has swapped to be using the GS instead of the FS, and that of course makes things easier because they can just use the swap GS now to flip-flop between these two data structures in kernel. And furthermore, uh, because the 64-bit the system can still be running 32-bit code, when they're using 32-bit code, it'll still be using these old uh, locations for these data structures. So that's why they're not using any specific, they're not reusing the FS for 64-bit specific stuff. They're just treating it as still the 32-bit things. And we had actually seen when we were dumping the GDT for, or in the optional material, if you happen to watch it, uh, dumping the 32-bit GDT, you saw that the GS had invalid values, so it was not being used on 32-bit. So there's a little bit of symmetry going on here with FS and GS in 64-bit systems. Now for Linux, I know that a lot less well, but from the citations that I've been able to find, on 32-bit systems, GS was used for thread local storage, very similar to how FS was used for thread information on Windows. 
and I couldn't find any good references about these. So if anyone has any good references for how those are used, please send them my way. And then on the 64-bit systems, just like Windows sort of inverted what they use, this GS moved to FS. And the GS is currently listed as having no specific common use and that applications can use it for whatever they want. Whereas in the kernel space, probably in response to this swap GS functionality, the GS now points at what are called per CPU variables. And it's really data structure that the kernel can use in order to look up things like the stack location. So as I always say, cites or it didn't happen. I threw in some citations of why I'm saying any given data structure is used in any given way. You can check those out at your leisure. There's one other extra little bit of change that came along with this use of SwapGS as a more explicit way to swap data structures in user space and kernel space. So if CPU ID of input of seven in EAX and zero in ECX returns an EBX with the FSGS base bit zero set to one and CR4 has the FSGS base set to one, it means that the processor supports the following four new assembly instructions. Read FS base, write FS base, or read GS base, write FS base, write GS base. So these are instructions which, as you can see, are now all user space things. So all of a sudden you can start writing and reading to, reading from and writing to the FS and GS base MSRs without having to use the read MSR and write MSR, which were ring zero only assembly instructions. This gives operating system makers a little more flexibility in terms of what they do in user that is where we find the FSGS base bit, and that has to be set to one in order for those assembly instructions to work. Now, miscellaneous thing, just kind of found it humorous as I'm Googling around looking for references to, you know, what Linux uses for the FS and GS registers. I found this uh, Linux article, Linux news article about the, the end of the FSGS base saga. And I find it humorous because it kind of reads like a school newspaper, you know, talking about the drama amongst the, the various high schoolers. And this is the kind of drama which is frequently found in operating system development. And it's talking about how, you know, oh, Intel made the FSGS and then they were slow to get the, you know, patches to the Linux kernel that added support. And then someone else picked it up and then someone else didn't like the changes that they made. So it's just uh, the typical kind of OS drama, but it reads as, you know, somewhat humorous to me, primarily because, you know, I think about the idea of internet historians someday digging up the archive and, you know, seeing preserved in, in internet stone this details of all the drama that went on. Anyways, check it out or don't, but it just gives you a little bit of context about how FSGS base started being used on Linux.